Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode, what are we at? 43. Rachel here, Treehouse Knits. How are you guys doing? It has been almost two months since I've podcast last. I'm sure it doesn't seem that long to all of us because summer has uh, always makes time go by quickly. I am for the first time outside in my backyard. Over there is the treehouse for which this podcast is named and our little fire pit over there. And I'm just sitting on our patio furniture enjoying the beautiful Michigan weather. I am coming to you from um, outside the city limits of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And we are experiencing beautiful summer weather right now. It is uh, July, mid-July, the date July 11th. So it's so great to be back. I've missed you guys and um, I've got a lot to show you. It's been a busy couple of months, very fun couple of months, and I'm looking forward to sharing with you some of the stuff that I've been doing, some of my acquisitions, um, and a little bit of our travels. If you followed me on Instagram, you may have seen our trip to Europe. This was a trip that we had planned. My husband and I talked when the kids were really, really young how cool it would be before they left the nest to take them on a European trip. And so this was the year. My kids are now 16 and 13. We thought that would be a good age. So we've been saving up for this trip for a long time. And it was even better than we had expected it would be. It was so fun to be together, the four of us, just nonstop together. You know, if you would have told me how much fun teenagers were, I 10 years ago, I maybe wouldn't have believed you, but. I'm really, really blessed and grateful that I have some really fun teenage boys. I didn't uh, have to lift a suitcase if I didn't want to, and uh, we just had a great time. How cool is it to be together for breakfast every day? Something that we do not do, for sure. We are, the minute our alarms go off, we usually are out the door different times. So just having breakfast together as a family for two weeks was so much fun. It was just lots of laughter. We flew into Munich and got over our jet lag there. And then we headed over to Vienna for a couple of days visiting a family that my husband lived with. And uh, when he was about, maybe about 20 years ago for about a year, he lived with them. And we headed through the Alps, um, Innsbruck, we stayed at their chateau. It's all on my Instagram. I did a daily journal every day and I stuck with it, which is pretty incredible that I actually stuck with it. But um, I look forward to putting that into some sort of book form that my husband and I can enjoy as our kids get older and leave us and have their own families. We will always remember that amazing trip. So we hit four countries. We really focused mainly on Austria and Germany. Um, but we did dabble a little into France for my son who's taking French in high school and we also uh, we left uh, we flew back to the United States from Zurich so we did a little bit of Switzerland too in there always great to go to other places in the world and experience just different cultures and um, and it's also a great feeling to come back home so that's where we are with the trip to Europe. That was definitely a highlight. And if you're interested in more of that, it's on my Instagram. I also, before we went to Europe, I participated in the Plucky um, pop-up. Happened the end of May, or beginning of June. And I was fortunate enough to actually teach a class for them as well as do some demos on socks. And I enjoyed meeting you Plucky fans so much. Uh, our class was a nice sized class where I taught some new people how to knit, which was, that's always very um, gratifying to do when you see the spark in someone's eyes that they're going to be excited to continue on in knitting. A couple of ladies were there because they live in the community that Plucky lives in and they didn't even know about it until Plucky opened up their brick and mortar um, event space downtown and they were curious what is this and then they they saw the hordes of people coming from all over the country to this pop-up and they just wanted to be a part of it in their community and hopefully I've made some uh, knitting fanatics out of them. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, that was a great experience for the class. Plucky gave each one of the participants this really big tote bag, which I loved. Um, I just love the color, creative, colorful, 
Plucky, that about sums up Plucky. Plucky is amazing yarn, as I'm sure you all know. And then uh, for the class that I taught, I actually just kind of came up with a really simple mitten. It's a fingerless mitt. I don't think I shared this with you on my last podcast, but what it does is it teaches them um, how to cast on the knit stitch, the purl stitch, although this pattern does not use the purl stitch, and then binding off. And really it's a big rectangle you bring together by sewing and leaving a little gap for the thumb. So it worked out really well for the class. And I actually put the pattern, I think I put it on Ravelry. If I haven't, I will, as just a free download. If you wanna teach anyone how to knit that, um, you know, you wanna do something a little different than a washcloth, Normally for washcloths, I'll use a um, cotton yarn, and Plucky doesn't have cotton weight yarn that I know of. They didn't really have any yarn that would be good for a washcloth, so I thought this would be a good use of their yarn in a beginner class. So if you're interested, I do have that under my Treehouse Knits um, shop on Ravelry. You can down that, download that for free if you want. So the class went really well. The demos were so much fun. Lots of great questions from people. I just really loved the whole experience. So Plucky, if you're listening, I would love to be part of another one if you're interested. After our Germany trip, we got home, it was a late Sunday night. I did several loads of laundry, but we didn't really unpack. And uh, the next morning, my sons and I drove for the about four hours north to Northport, Michigan, where a dear friend of mine has a cottage on the lake. And the boys participated in a sailing school for the week. Both my boys enjoy sailing. and. Uh, with their friends, it was a great, great experience and it was a lot of fun with, for me to be up there just kind of knitting away. I've been working on using my, look at this yarn, it is so gorgeous. This is a chain plied yarn. Let's see if I can get it up close to the camera so you can see. It's chain plied. It's really similar to uh, Wool Folk, I think. I think it's Wool Folk Far that's the um, chain plied, but this is actually from June's Knit Crate. Let me see if I have... It's a neat combination. It is their Vitalana Aloft. The colorway is Tiger Lily, and it's a DK weight. It's merino wool, alpaca, and organic cotton. So it's a lighter but soft um, yarn, and it just spoke to me. I love, let me show you the shawl in the, here's the back of the shawl. It spoke to me, I love this patterning in here. I really like shawls for summer that have some sort of mesh kind of look going on. And um, that's what I really loved. And I did like the Pico bind off. I thought it was really a cute um, edging on that. So initially I started it out doing this pattern up here. And then we were in on the train in Europe and we had a four, four and a half hour train ride ahead of us. And I wanted to be able to look out the window. So I took it all apart and I decided to just do um, garter stitch and when you know when you're wearing it you don't really see that detail anyway so I ended up and of course I'm in the middle of a row but I can kind of show you what I'm doing at the top I just did a garter stitch and then did the um, the mesh patterning it's so soft and squishy and light. So I wish you could feel it. Um, but now I'm just working on the border and this is gonna go to a special person that I know loves this color. And I think she will really appreciate it. And just knowing that I was knitting it in Europe and then I knit it, uh, the lot, most of the mesh I knit when we were up north uh, in Northport. So I think the recipient will love this. I hope she does. Anyway, so that's what I've been working on, mainly uh, knit-wise. It was a great, great project for the European trip and for Northport because I could really memorize the mesh easily and the garter stitch. We all know, you know, you can 
pretty much do that in your sleep after a while. So that is my, what I'm calling my tiger lily wrap because that is the colorway that Knit Crate named this, tiger lily. Um, but again, it came in the June Knit Crate box. And I tell you, I know I say it over and over, but Knit Crate just keeps getting better and better every month. And now you get two skeins of their yarn in the membership box usually. And you can make a big project out of that. And it's only $19 for what's a really high quality, I think, beautiful yarn. But then after the month, or just, I think it even starts during the actual month, they do a discount. So if you wanna get more of a particular yarn uh, or try a different yarn, it's a lot of times 50 to 60% off the price. If so, if I wanted to get a whole sweater's worth of this, I, it's inexpensive yarn that's fun to get in the mail every month. And now they have really nice add-ins to their boxes at a good price. I honestly can't say more good things about it. And I love their YouTube videos that kind of show you what next month's crate's going to be like so you can really think about it. Their pop-up shops are really great too on their website so check them out it's a real i think modern way to buy yarn especially if you do not live near a local yarn shop but you want high quality yarn that's been curated um, that comes with patterns every box comes with this booklet that contains like three or four patterns with the different yarns of the month so i do ha i am an affiliate of them i do have a link down below i support their company 100 percent. i think it's such a cool idea and i wish i would have thought of it myself <laughs> anyway um so yeah check the link down below and thank you to all of you who have already used my link i appreciate that so much when you've purchased your knit crate boxes or subscriptions thank you so much i really appreciate that so, that is my tiger lily wrap for someone special. Okay, so, I've got a lot to show you. First off, I want to thank you so much for everyone who has purchased a copy of my Rennie's mitts. I designed these mitts uh, based on, I mean, they're cherry mitts, right? These speak summer in Michigan to me. I have a little blurb on my uh, pattern that you can download off of Ravelry that uh, talks about what inspired me, what Cherry Orchard inspired me to make these mittens. They're a really good mitten, I think, for a new color work pattern knitter. Um, just because I really kind of, it's got a small amount of color work. I teach you how to do the Latvian braids and then this bobble kind of stitch. It's called a, um, oh my gosh, what's the stitch called? cluster sorry it's a cluster stitch um, that was a new stitch to me and I just feel like it looks like cherries a bowl of cherries and um, a simple decrease at the top simple thumbs you're not doing any color work in there so it's a and it's in DK weight they go really fast and everybody that has already knit them up has said to me how fast they were to knit up. So thank you to those of you who have downloaded these mittens and I really appreciate seeing the progress. So if you do knit these mittens, I'd love to see it on Instagram or on Ravelry. Just do the hashtag Rennie's Mitts and uh, I can't wait to see more people knit them up. I really appreciate the people that have downloaded already. Why don't I go ahead and get an, uh, the administrative stuff out of the way before we get into some of the acquisitions that I got before we went to Europe and during the European trip. Um, the Summer Mitten Cal 2019 is in full force. Denise and I had a wonderful chat this morning and we decided to extend it. We want to extend it to Saturday, August 31st. And that is mainly because um, summer has just gone by so quickly and we wanted to give you guys plenty of time we both have chatter um, chatter threads in our Ravelry uh, pages as do we have finished object threads personally I will be um, pulling for prizes from the chatter thread the end of July and the end of August and then I will be pulling for a grand prize so the uh, prizes that I have are amazing First off, for the chatter threads for June and July, 
Legacy Fiber Hearts, my friend Sue has donated a couple of sets of her DK weight. Um, and you can use it for really anything, but they work really well for color works, uh, color work mittens. So this is her gray gardens. Look at the tonal gray there. And this is her beautiful hydrangea. Oh, I love, love, love the hydrangea. It is taking my might and my will to not knit these up myself. She's sent not one set, but two. And this is amazing too. This would look at how that would look together. This is Grey Gardens again. And this is her infamous Edward Scissors Hands. Look at, it's got a very subtle uh, mauve tone almost in there with the gray and the speckles of black. You can see some speckles better over here. Gorgeous. This would be stunning in mittens as well. So those are the two prizes for the chatter threads. And then the main prize will be coming directly from the Wooly Thistle. Corinne, Corinne has graciously offered up her 13 skein set of um, Rauma phenol yarn. She does a baker's dozen kind of thing where if you pick 12, you can, if you buy 12, you get a 13th and she's going to throw in a set for one of, for our grand prize winner in the finished threads section. That is an amazing prize. I want to thank both of our sponsors from the bottom of my heart. Um, the Wooly Thistle, check out the website if you haven't. She, Corrine, um, procures her yarns from uh, Great Britain and other places in Europe now. They're yarns that we find hard to find ourselves and uh, it's just an amazing service. She does the shipping, so we don't have to. That's her tagline. And uh, it's true. It's an amazing resource that she has created from the ground up. Check out her website. I especially love, not only can you see the yarns, but she talks about why the yarn is special, where is it from, the people who make the yarn from sheep to skein. So check her out. And then Legacy Fiber Arts, another stellar, stellar company specializing in yarn dyeing. Sue and Chelsea do such a great professional job with their business and Sue's background is amazing as a business owner, as an artist especially, and the way that she dies is incredible. Um, you know, it's, it's yarn that, um, I don't know, the, the way she dies is beautiful. It's expertly done, high quality yarn bases that they use. So I appreciate both of my sponsors so, so much, both of our sponsors, I should say. So check out Denise's um, next podcast episode for her prizes that she will be giving out. And we're having so much fun just watching the chatter thread, watching on Instagram, use our hashtag. If you need more information, you can link through to my um, I'll have a link in the show notes to this episode and I will also have a link in my link tree on Instagram that can take you directly to the podcast page on Ravelry that just outlines everything about this knit along. So I think that's all I wanted to share with you. Not all, that was a lot to share with you administratively. So let's get right into kind of the, I think, fun part. I love to see what people are purchasing, especially when they're traveling. And so, first of all, though, I want to share a couple things. Before I left, my friend Shelly um, sent me a skein of yarn she no longer was in love with. She thought I would love because I had expressed my love for a skein that looked very similar in a knit, cr knit crate pop-up a few months ago. This is actually from Cloudborn, which is, I believe, off of Craftsy, Blueprint, whoever they are now. I'm kind of confused. Are you confused about Blueprint like I am? I need to dig a little deeper, but I, ever since they changed, I've kind of, I used to be a huge Craftsy fan. I don't know why I'm not as into Blueprint. That's another story. <laughs> anyway, um, I just love the colors. They're kind of Arizona-like to me, but I can't wait to run this through my sock machine, my knitting machine, I should say, and turn it into a sock. I think it'll be beautiful. It's Cloudborn, like I said. It's their 8020 Superwash Merino. Very soft, nice twist, cool colors. There you go. And thank you so much, Shelly, for thinking of me. 
Okay, so I have no particular order here. You know what, one more thing before I take off. I participated in a yarn swap with a bunch of knitters who are making, um, they have like, uh, oh, the granny stripe blankets and the square blankets, the scrappy blankets. They were doing a scrap yarn exchange and I happened to be paired up with the wonderful Lori from Chickenwood. How lucky am I because she's a soap maker, a um, lotion bar maker, and now she has wool wash too. And when I got that package, my whole mailbox smelled divine. This is a handmade soap she included in my package and it's patchouli rose. It is beautiful. You know, sometimes with these soaps, my mother-in-law taught me this. If you just break them up into a, some small pieces and tuck them away with your yarn, um, I know if it's a certain, like if it's um, tea tree oil or lavender, tends to make the moths not come by and it makes your projects smell so good when you're knitting them up. This, oh, this would be a really good one for my, um, my bins that my yarn, my yarn is in. This is her handmade soap with lanolin. So she's included lanolin in her soap for use with um, washing your wools. So I'm gonna definitely, now that I've shown you this, I'm going to try that with my socks especially. And then she's into these lotion bars as well. Beautiful, can't have enough of these. Oh, this has a minty smell. I don't know, it just says essential oils, but oh, it smells so good. And I, I look forward to putting that into uh, my knitting bag. So thank you, Lori, for those extra little things you put in with the beautiful scrap yarn that you sent me that will go into my granny stripe blanket. <laughs> okay, what else did I have to show you? When we were traveling, my husband lost a button. We didn't have any yarn or anything, any yarn, any thread or needles. So I called downstairs to the hotel and asked if they had a little sewing kit and they came up with the sewing kit but you know what I loved about this sewing kit? All the needles, there's six needles in there and they're all preloaded with the colors. And you can see my husband's button was that color that's missing. But you know that I grabbed another one of these before I left. That is luxury when your needles are already thread. I don't know, I just got a kick out of it. So I thought I would share that really cool sewing kit with you that I got. Now, when we were in Vienna, I looked into a yarn store and there was only one that I could find. It was a small little yarn store, very nice owner. I will put the name of it here if I can find it. And I'm trying to remember what I got. It's kind of all, oh, I know. Here's what I got. I saw this yarn. I love the colors. Look at the colors in there. It's called Grundel. There's the name. Hot socks. It's a six ply superwash. So it's a thicker sock yarn. I thought it would look good for men and women, the colors. I think my husband and my boys would like the, the colors. That's what it's going to knit up to look like. And it is made in Germany. I was looking for things that were specifically German. So I picked that up in Vienna, which is Austria, but you know. Anyway, so that's the yarn I picked up. I look forward to trying that on the machine. And then there was a maker there who had these little bags that they were selling. And you know, you can only, you, you can never have enough of these types of bags. So I haven't opened it up yet, but there is a, loop in here as well. I'm not sure why there's a loop inside and outside. Hmm. And there's paper in here that I'm sure <laughs> is in German, which is kind of fun. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was a very cute little bag that I can use for stitch markers, just little things. Even lipsticks and lip glosses would fit in there. But now I'm curious, what do you think this loop is for on the inside? Let me know if you have any ideas on that. Okay, now, after Vienna, we headed 
to a bunch of little communities on our way to Salzburg. When we got to Salzburg, I looked up a yarn store and it happened to be really close to our hotel. The yarn store is called, the bag says wool is cool. <laughs> the yarn store was called Will Kistel. <laughs> and they have this gorgeous, it's called Drakenstein. This is lace weight, browns to uh, tealy colors. And 800 meters, so that's about, what, 800 and, nine, about 900 yards in 216 grams. It's a four ply. It's 50% cotton, 50% I think acrylic is what it says. It's very soft. It came with this really cute <laughs> bike um, charm and I thought I'd try it on my knitting machine. I mean it's lace weight. It's a lot of lace weight but I thought it would be fun to make something. My machine does a really good job with lace weight so I picked that up and then they had a really pretty color of opal. So I picked this color up of opal. Here's what it's going to look like. It's the, it's a light though. It's opal light, which I had not seen, which doesn't mean it's not here in the US as well, but it was about, oh, I'd say 40% cheaper in Austria and Germany than it is here at home. And I had not seen this lighter weight sock, so I thought it would make for a great sock for the summer. And it is 75-25, so 75% superwash, 25% acrylic. Um, so that is my opal. So those are the two things I got at that store. After Salzburg, we, or Salzburg, after Salzburg, we headed to Germany from that point on and the city of Freiburg, which I loved. It's a college town. Our hotel was right in the old town inside the wall of the city, very near the cathedral, beautiful little alleyways and that had great shops and the day we were there they actually had a really nice farmers market around the cathedral beautiful breeze it was just gorgeous weather and the, the, because it's a college town as well it had more of the modern amenities outside the wall um, it had the culture and the shops and the restaurants that a college town brings in but it still had that old world feeling with the cathedral and the the city walls so we walked all around. I went into one yarn store that was very close to our hotel and it was half full. I couldn't tell if they were going out of business. There was no one working in there when I opened the door and the bell went off when the door opened and a woman came out and she just wasn't interested in me being there. So, and I, I just took a quick glance around and it, I don't know if it was closing or what. So I left there and I thought, oh, that's a bummer because I had researched that yarn shop before I went. So we went over to the cathedral area and as we were walking through an alleyway, I came across this tiny hole in the wall that sold opal and regia and another German yarn, which I'll pull out, I forget the name of it, and undergarments, <laughs> which was very interesting combination. A hole in the wall, no air conditioning, it was hot in there, but opal and regia for days so and everything is like again 40 percent cheaper than here in the u.s i went a little crazy there ernst rap uber hundred jar i don't know if that's the name of the i don't think that was the name of the business maybe it was because it's showing a picture of the alleyway and the cathedral in the background or this is a bag that i got somewhere else but let me just no particular order here I'm going to go through and just kind of show to you what I got. Now, I was specifically, I had seen, um, oh, what had I seen on Instagram that got the whole series of the new Opal Claude Monet series? I don't know who it was anymore, but ever since then, I've been thinking about that. So, I, they had a ton of it. So, I got this one which is based on that painting by Monet, Chrysanthemum. 
and I'm just gonna pull them out in any order. This was an opal that is extra thick. I love the colors. I thought they were very 80s. I feel like I had a winter coat that had these colors in it when I was growing up, but um, this is not part of Claude Monet, but it was just a thicker one, which I really love for the winter for slippers around the house. Here's another Claude Monet based on that painting. And when it knits up, oh, they're just gorgeous. They had all the samples so you could see what they looked like when they were knit up. This is that painting. Look at how gorgeous. These are gorgeous. Look at how it knits up. I cannot wait. And I told you I went a little crazy, but man, when they're that cheap and it's light in your luggage too. This is another opal light. I thought this would be nice for my husband or boys. Colors they like and it knits up like that. Okay, this is called Pro Lana. They had these for like four euros a skein, which is like, I think maybe $5 a skein. Look at the colorway. It feels just like Opal or Regia. It's 75.25. Pro Lana, Mine Vula. Moulin 2. Worth a try. It's uh, made in Turkey and yeah, 75.25. Isn't that pretty? Here's another one of the same. Kind of reminds me of, um, oh, what's the Canadian? Croy, Patton's Croy, sort of, but feels a little better than Patton's Croy. This is another one for the boys or for me. I like that colorway too. Here's another one. I mean, $5 a skein, I couldn't pass this up. I just thought amazing colorways and these will be great Christmas gifts. Open it up. This one's kind of falling apart, but I hadn't seen this colorway in the Zauber balls. And the Zauber balls were also a lot cheaper in Germany. So I got this color in the Zauber ball that knits up like that. And last but not least, this is from Austria, if I recall. Let me see here. They had samples knit up in this that was gorgeous. It's cotton called Wooly Hugs, veronicahug.com. It's 50% cotton, 50% acrylic, I guess. Oh, again, it's made in Turkey. But look at the colorway. It's grays to darker gray to seafoam green to, that's a navy blue in the middle not showing up as nice as it is in person. The, I can't wait to try this one on the machine too. The way that it knit up, they had a wrap. It's so cool. I'll just, you'll have to see it to believe it. I wish I would have taken a picture of it actually, but it's it's got a special way that the colors trans um, translate as you're knitting them that I had not ever seen before. So I'm excited about that too. Okay, that is it that's in the bag from <sighs> Freiburg. I told you I went a little crazy with yarn. <laughs> the other thing that I got home and in the mail, oh, what's this? Oh, back up. There was this such a cute little store called La Drogerie. I don't know my French, but this was in Strasbourg, France. And they had a whole wall of Liberty, um, oh, bias tape. Oh my gosh. So I picked up this bias tape that's turned into laces. Hello. You know I'm going to have to just buy a pair of shoes to use these laces in. I love those. And I thought I would line a t-shirt or something with this really cute Liberty bias tape. So that was a very fun find. So then when I got home, I had a really nice note from my friend Kimberly, who sent to me, maybe you've seen this already, Locke and Lou. This is a friend of the amazing Molly from a homespun house. Her friend, her childhood friend makes stitch markers and by hand. 
I don't know if it's clay or what, but oh my gosh. Kimberly, how did you know that I love red poppies? You have to ignore my nails, they're bad. I got a red poppy and a dragonfly, which is both so perfect for summer. But I have to say the red poppy reminds me of our Germany trip because they have wild red poppies growing all over the place. They were blooming when we were there and it was, I'd always point them out. I think my kids got tired of me pointing out the, the red poppies, but they were just beautiful, wild, in the wild, red poppies everywhere. So thank you so much, Kimberly. That was so sweet. That's just a gift for no reason. How often do you get that in this world? <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, so that's mainly what I wanted to chat with you about today. Oh, Sunday in three days, I am headed up to Wool and Honey to meet the grocery girls. I cannot wait. And I think Hohi Locatelli is up there with them now. I've seen on their Facebook, it was so funny on, not Facebook, on Instagram, um, Tracy and Jody landing at the Grand Rapids International Airport, which is just a few miles from my house. Um, they landed a couple days ago. They've been enjoying Northern Michigan. I think Wool and Honey has rolled out the red carpet for them and is just showing you how beautiful our part of the world is. I'm thrilled that they're seeing Lake Michigan up there, Glen Arbor, just they're staying at this gorgeous farm, working farm. And that's where my Sunday event is that I won a ticket to. I think it's for like maybe 35 people. It's a brunch with Jody and Tracy and I'm excited to just meet them face to face. Maybe Hohi will be there with her husband. And of course, Plucky Knitter is gonna be up there as well too with, um, Tracy has a new pattern out that looks so much fun to knit in the summer. Maybe I'll pop a picture in here. It's a wrap with plucky, bright colors. I love eyelets in a wrap, as you probably can tell of the looking at the wraps I've knit. Um, I just love that polka dotty kind of look. And then with the feather and fan, I think the zigzag look um, of that wrap, I think it'd be a lot of fun. So I might look for some plucky yarn up there for that. <sighs> One final thing. Not fun when you return home from your European trip to this. <gasps> yes. I have jury duty next week and chances are they won't even take me. This is my third time being called up in six years of since we moved here. And the last two times they never take me. I call the Friday before and it says you've been excused for the whole week. But th that has always been in the winter time. So I'm sure now that it's beautiful outside and I you know, have lots of fun things outside to do, they probably will need me for some long trial. But I have to admit, I kind of want to be part of the process sometime in my life and next week would be a good week because we don't have a lot going on. It's not the middle of the school year where there's a lot, lots of stuff. It's kind of quiet doldrum, doldrum days of summer. So if I get called up, that's okay. Um, the only thing that has me concerned, what a great way to get some knitting done, right? But on here, it specifically says, people entering the courthouse are required to pass through metal detectors and are subject to being searched. Purses, briefcases, or other containers may also be searched. Weapons, cutting edge, or stabbing instruments are prohibited items. And in parentheses, that they say that includes pocket knives, that makes sense, knitting needles, and glass containers. <sighs> right there. Can you see it? Knitting needles. So I'm going to have to bring a book or something, but, or I will just take two pencils out of my pocket and just knit. Maybe not a good time to <laughs> disobey the law indirectly. I don't know. <sighs> So there you have it, folks. That is the end of episode 43. It's been heavy on the acquisitions, I know. I just wanted to stop by, say hi, and um, see how you guys are doing, too. How's your summer going? Tell me a little bit about what you've been up to. What's your travel knitting been like? Have you gone places? Have you taken knitting? Have you visited new yarn stores? Um, yeah. 
I hope you've enjoyed this episode outside. I know I've enjoyed doing it outside. I don't know what I was afraid of this whole time. It's been really nice to to enjoy the enjoy nature sitting out here. Guess I'd be curious. Have you ever had jury duty? Ever been called up to jury duty and did you take your knitting? And if you couldn't take your knitting, what did you do while you waited around for jury duty? And what are other countries like? Do you have jury duty? I'd be just curious to hear what jury duty is like for you. Hmm. Can you hear the birds? Beautiful. Anyways, have a great couple of weeks. I hope to be with you guys soon. Join in on the knit along. You have plenty of time to knit, to at least participate in the um, chatter thread. If not, in the if you don't have a finished object, I am drawing twice from the chatter thread. So it's all about just getting your knitting out, enjoying that color work, mitten knitting, and it's just infusing some of the warmth of the summer into the mitten so that come this winter, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that is, you will have some warm mittens to keep you warm. That makes sense. You will have some mittens to keep you warm through it all. Anyways, have a great, great couple of weeks, and we'll see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.